Well, hello to everyone. We're here on uh, Thursday again with our Global Missions Project interview with one of our mission partners. And uh, the ones that we have today are, uh, are Dan and Rose Smith, who are our mission partners in the country of Hungary primarily, although we have done a project with them that also went into Serbia uh, and Croatia. And there's actually discussions with them about uh, some future projects that could go to uh, some other uh, Central European countries also. And uh, I look forward to talking to Dan about that in just a minute. So I, I, wanna, I want you to meet Dan right away. I just want, I want you to know Dan and Rose are wonderful people. Uh, God has uh, given them a unique calling uh, to this area of the world. And uh, they serve there with great love and compassion uh, for the people there. And it's always been a joy for us to uh, serve with them and work with them with both Celebration Orchestra and Metro Big Band, both groups. And uh, so let me welcome Dan to you right now. Dan, hello. And good, good afternoon. Good evening to you. <laughs> uh, I, have to, I have to tell you that uh, it's uh, 5 p.m. Central Time here in the United States. I'm saying this to all of our GMP folks that are watching. Uh, but for Dan, it's, uh, uh, it's midnight. And uh, Dan is gracious enough to be here with us uh, at this late hour. I asked him when I got him on, on uh, just a few minutes ago if, if I woke him up. Uh, and he's, he said he got he said he was ready to go. So we're thankful that he's here. Uh, uh, Rose will not be with us in the interview today. And um, but uh, we'll be able to talk a good bit with Dan. And but Rose is uh, indeed uh, your part, your right hand, right hand man, isn't, isn't she, Dan? That's exactly right. And uh, I know I know that she assists you with many things. Uh, uh, so whenever we've had the tour, she's there really at every moment. And, um, and we do this uh, together to host everyone. Well, and uh, tell me a little, little bit about uh, your background, Dan. Where, where are you from originally? Uh, Rose and I are both from Mississippi. And w when I was a bag boy as a teenager in a grocery store, she and her mom would come in on Saturdays to buy groceries, and all of us bag boys would fight over who would carry out our groceries. So uh, <laughs> that, that's the way that I met her. And it's interesting that she said when she was 12 years old that she prayed that she would marry a missionary. And uh, I think God granted her wish because I never had that uh, that desire to be a missionary. I never imagined that I would have a passport. And so I think God honored her prayers. Uh, it sounds like it to me. And, uh, and it sounds like you also, you also honored God's prayers with, uh, from her uh, to be her partner and in, uh, enroll uh, in this mission work that you're doing there. And uh, tell me uh, uh, a little bit about uh, uh, what you said. She had, she prayed that prayer. And uh, even, even when she was 12 years old, she felt oh, she was tw 12. But when we, um, I graduated from Lee University in Cleveland, Tennessee, and we immediately went to Charleston, South Carolina. And I was music director in Charleston, South Carolina in a church and taught music in public school there. And she worked in a bank. So uh, we also called Charleston, South Carolina home because we were there 13 years. And I really feel like uh, in the church that we were part of, there was a great emphasis on prayer. And this was in the 1980s. And as we began to pray, and we would pray for, for nations, when we got to the point that you said, here I am, Lord, send me, it happened. Wow. And uh, it was, um, we began to feel that we were to go as missionaries. And year after year after year, I was back in the classroom and I thought this would be the very last year that I'm in this classroom. We're going as missionaries and it, it wouldn't happen. And it, it got to 1990. And during that year, we had three different people that came up to us and said to us, before this year is out, you will leave the USA. And we left on December the 31st, 1990. And so we left before the year was out. And later I came to realize that we had to wait till communism fell. Had we gone as missionaries before, we would have gotten uh, located in a country that God had not called us to. 
Wow. And now, where did you go first? What was the first country where you served? Um, actually, our first calling was to Albania. That's the only country I ever uh, prayed for. The Lord sent, uh, sent me to that country. And when I first heard that, I was watching a 100 Huntley Street from uh, Canada, a Christian program. And they were praying for communist nations. This is probably 1985. And... It, they started with Albania and they said they had no contacts with any Christians in Albania. And the, the official report that they received was that the last Christian had been buried under concrete. Wow. And I started weeping and I said, Lord, send me to that country. And but it, you, you could not go there. When the door opened, we actually came to Hungary and were administrators of a Bible school that trained Romanian church leaders. And so in three years, we had 400 Romanian church leaders that came to our uh, uh, center. Later, we did go to Albania and we were administrators of what is called AEP or Albanian Encouragement Project. And it's an organization that coordinated 75 different mission organizations that all worked in Albania. Uh, and so we thought that we had left Hungary, and but then the war happened in 1997, and the war actually started, um, oh, about 200 meters from our house. And so uh, we were in, in, in the hot spot, and there were death threats against our son, and so we really had to flee. And... And so that's a whole story in itself, but we were able to get a, a flight back to Budapest uh, the next morning because uh, the war started during the night. And uh, we, so we went back to Budapest and I left my family there and I actually went back to Albania and continued my work there because it was, it was necessary to be there. And uh, in the end, Instead of Rose and our son moving back to Albania, I went back to Hungary. So um, we've been in Hungary since 1991, except for that time in Albania. And then later, several years later, we actually went back to Albania for another year. And But up front, we knew this would be a one-year assignment, and then we'd be back to Hungary. So, so, uh, so are, we talking, are we talking 30 years now in the mission field? Yeah, and uh, so uh, Rose and I had no children. Uh, the doctor in Charleston had said to her that it would be impossible for us to have children. And we came to Hungary, and Daniel is 28, and Marion is 22. <laughs> uh, God, God does miracles, doesn't he? Right. Uh, that's amazing. By the way, a, a number of our GMP folks are signing on and writing little notes of hello to you. And uh, uh, one in particular that I thought you might uh, be pleased with is uh, Esther uh, Lestak. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she's uh, just signed on to say hi to uh, you and Rose. And uh, on, 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 along with a number of our other uh, folks who have uh, been there to serve with you and some who haven't. Uh, but the, the one that I was really thinking about before uh, this interview was Esther. And um, because any time that the Metro Big Band or the uh, Celebration Orchestra travels, you have your own personal Hungarian translator. Well, amen to that. And she is excellent. And um, so she's from the city of Norge Kanija. And on the very first trip, which is 2014, mm -hmm. uh, you and her pastor was that was your connection to go to to Hungary for the first time, but you took along with you a guest pianist, which was Alex Jolt, and we had come in contact with him, and uh, he wrote us and said, "Okay, I'm going to Hungary. We were looking to have some places in the Budapest area," and uh, so we started communicating, and that's. That's the way we made our connection to you. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, Esther is special to us. Uh, just to reiterate, to make sure uh, some of our folks who may not know this, Esther is Hungarian, 
and uh, uh, she's a Hungarian national, uh, but uh, she uh, got very confused and uh, got connected with a drummer of all things, <laughs> and uh, and she's now married to uh, Tim, one of our uh, regular drummers that travels with us, and we're we always love having them travel with us uh, together. Um, now the uh, uh, now you mentioned that about uh, about Alex uh, Jolt, uh, the pianist. Uh, and when he traveled with us, it was with our celebration orchestra. It was, That's with an orchestra. True. and, uh, and you and I are talking about uh, doing that again on uh, a project upcoming very, very in the next couple of years, aren't we? Oh, we would love that. Uh, it, it, it was interesting, you know, uh, Alex Jolt, of course, I recognize that uh, name as a Hungarian name. And I had uh, seen an, an, an arrangement online for him and wanted to get a sound bite for it, there was a email number there of the compo uh, ranger, but no sound bite. And I had written to him to ask him, do you have a sound bite so I can listen to this arrangement? By the way, we live in Hungary and I see you've got a Hungarian name. So that's the way we became uh, connected with, with him. And uh, so he was born in the US, but both parents Hungarian. And he had only been to Hungary, I think, once to see a grandparent. And so um, it, it was so interesting that the very, very first concert that he gave, it was very emotional for him. And uh, we were at the Bitch Cape Baptist Church with a concert. And uh, to me, that concert still stands out in my mind. But another interesting thing that happened then was uh, that was the first day that I ever met you. And I believe it was your clarinet player who failed that night and ended up in the emergency room. And so you had just traveled all the way to, uh, from the States to Hungary, uh, had a rehearsal, uh, had a concert. Everybody went home or to the hotel and then uh, in the dark, she fell, broke several bones, and you and I are in the hospital that night. And, yeah. um, and by the way, she's doing fine. So that's good. Yeah, I think she I think she's your Spanish translator sometimes, is it? Uh, Spanish and Portuguese, both. Yeah, yeah. she's uh, she's fluent. Um, well, uh, uh, as you said, Alex uh, does have a Hungarian background, and one of the things that we loved about him being with us is that he shared his personal testimony during our programs and he was able to do it 100% in uh, Hungarian. Yes. And uh, so I, it, I felt like it was a lifetime dream for him. And and for us, it was the opening of a door that um, has w led us into something that we have really loved and we love hosting this. And in addition to the Metro Big Band and the Celebration Orchestra. We've also hosted um, Lee University's Symphonic Band. Yep. Uh, we've hosted um, Judson University out of Elgin, uh, Illinois. Their choir, along with Huntley Brown, who is uh, a Jamaican pianist that uh, plays a lot with the uh, Billy Graham Association. Uh, this year we had the Lee University's Ladies of Lee choir planned, but of course that got canceled. And so the two choir tours have been very extensive European tours where uh, the um, Judson University, we were in 10 countries with them. Mm. So we, we totally went from Central Europe all the way to, to Western Europe and ended in Paris. Wow. So uh, that was great. So, so this is, uh, opening a door uh, for us that I I really felt like it just kind of brought everything into focus, like you would focus a camera. And to me, having music that is quality music and the power of the Holy Spirit is the best opening, the best tool of evangelism. And that's our very heart is to have evangelism but so many times you don't have that open door. And when we have a, a quality group that is um, like professional level,
but at the same time they, they, with the power of the holy spirit in it it's to me it's no better way th than to share because you actually get permission from that person to enter into their life yeah and music music does open that door doesn't it for it, uh, it surely for does and uh and Camp, one of the things that I am so impressed of you is what every situation you're in, you adapt to it so quickly and so easily and do it in a manner that is uh, not offensive, that is acceptable. Uh, you respect the people who, who were there at the uh, concert. And when they when someone comes to one of the concerts and they leave, they have had an experience on many levels and they have been uh, musically they have been touched they have been inspired spiritually they have had an experience and um in the last time that you were here uh, i i remember there was a little hardware store and Rose really likes the lady who works there. And one day she Rose said to me, she's let's just stop there. I said, well, we, we got to buy something. And we went in and all of a sudden I thought we got a brochure out there in the in the car. And I went and got it and she was there. And brought a young man with her. And they were visibly touched and Deborah, the soloist immediately when that concert was over, she went right to them. And um, many testimonies I could give, but I, I love I, that. I love that. And uh, by the way, uh, Alex Jolt just signed in to say hello, uh, just uh, so you know, and uh, saying, saying hi to everybody. Um, hey, we've just got a couple of minutes left here. Uh, I'd like to ask you this uh, for the sake of our GMP folks. And I, I appreciate your affirmation of what uh, I personally have been allowed to do, but I have to give the, the, uh, uh, the kudos to our, GMP people who are very, very flexible and they do know how to go with the flow. Well, we got to meet uh, your chairman of the board on this last trip, Kent and his wife, Rebecca. Uh, still have never met Ken Hughes, but uh, Ken Hughes has made such an impression on us that if we ever come across somebody that we're working with that's really incom incompetent, we have the expression in our house, well, you have to realize you're not working with Ken, Ken Hughes. <laughs> Ken Hughes is tops. And, and I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that hundred percent. Hey, before we close down here, because we need to quickly, but uh, tell me uh, in a few words, uh, how you feel like GMP has benefited your ministry there. Well, as I was saying, it's really brought it into a focus and uh, it's allowed us to have, uh, a, a layer of evangelism that otherwise we would have never had. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm just thinking one of the, our very good friends was um, a lady who became a believer who before was a total atheist. Mm -hmm. And when we gave the concert on the, your last trip in, in Bitchke, she invited 27 guests, had a list, and all 27 were there. Wow. Incredible. Um, you, were the, you were the instrument for, for this to happen. Well, and I'm thankful that God used us for that uh, because we know that it was him and his power that did that. I just want to reiterate very quickly that uh, Metro Big Band has actually been there with you more frequently. Uh, and uh, you gr graced us with the opportunity to go to uh, Serbia and Croatia as well. And uh, we had some uh, amazing times uh uh, in those countries and everything. And I can tell you that Metro Big Band loves to be in Hungary with you. And speaking of Serbia and Croatia, uh, you have very active open invitations to return to both. Oh, and, awesome. and it looks like this next trip with Metro Big Band may be totally focused towards Serbia and Croatia. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Dan, it has been great to be here with you today uh, for you for, for tonight <laughs> for you. And, uh, and, and we're going to finish here in just a second. So you can go to bed and get some rest. Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> but uh, we, we do pray God's blessings, continued blessings on you. And, and uh, we're, 
we're all prayerful that uh, all of this is uh, uh, this uh, virus is going to pass uh, and uh, that we'll be able to uh, reunite and re uh, reinvigorate uh, uh, our, our our global missions project uh, uh, projects to go to various countries, including coming back to serve with you again in the near future. Please uh, give Rose a hug for all of us. Uh, I can say that'd be true for everybody that signed in and said hello today and uh, tell her that we love her too. And I can tell you that uh, GMP is uh, ready to go again to uh, serve and minister with you in the near future. We're excited for that. Okay. God bless you. It's great to be with you today. Bye to all of our GMP folks. See you next week. Okay.